After running my entire camping setup with a 98 amp hour AGM battery for the past four years and running out of power more times than I can count, the day has finally come to upgrade. We're doing it right, lithium of course, finally getting with the times and I can't wait to show you guys this new gear and get it all installed. Let's get started. What's up guys, we are finally adding lithium to the canopy setup and if you can't already tell, I'm a little bit excited. I've been wanting to go lithium for a long time, you guys know this. Actually, you guys have been telling me to go lithium for a long time too and I think it's gonna make a massive difference to the setup. Power has always been a problem for me, probably because I use it a bit more than the average person with all the cameras, microphones, lights, drones and everything else I charge while I'm away. Actually, just the other weekend, Bianca and I were camping on the coast and on the second night, so just night two, the main battery just completely died on us. It was down to like 10 volts or something ridiculous. The lights were dimming and it's just a constant struggle. Now, because a battery is something I really depend on and not something I replace very often, I wanted to do this properly and get something that had a solid reputation but also didn't cost a fortune because man, there are some expensive batteries out there. So after spending a lot of time on the internet scrolling through people's experiences on different brands and battery combinations, I decided on an iTech World battery because I read really positive stuff about the iTech World gear. They're an Aussie company based over here in Perth actually, and their prices seemed pretty reasonable. I had a chat with the team at iTech World about different options for the setup, and they've actually been kind enough to supply this battery and DC-DC charger for the setup. I'm extremely grateful to iTech World for that, but I want to make it clear that I did all my research and decided on an iTech World battery before I spoke to them. This is the gear I genuinely wanted for the setup, and it was just a massive bonus that they were keen to jump on board and support the channel. They also had no requirements whatsoever for what I talk about or cover in this video. It's completely up to me, which as you guys know by now, is the only way I'll agree to do this stuff anyway. So what's in these boxes? Starting with the battery, this is an iTech World 120X, which is a 120 amp hour LifePro 4 lithium battery. Woohoo, there she is. I'm really liking that orange top, it looks awesome. Now, if you're new to lithium, there's a lot more to it than this, but basically there's two main types. LifePro 4, which is what this one is here, and lithium ion, which is what this drill battery is, for example. So lithium ion's a lot more suited to things that draw a higher amount of power, like starting an engine or running a winch, whereas LifePro 4 is a lot more suited to camping setups. It's a much safer option, it's a much more stable option, and you can drain it empty and charge it full a lot more times. The 120X is the updated model, which has a crazy easy amount of usable charge. So I should be able to drain about 105 amp hours from this before needing to charge it, which is just crazy. And that's more than double what I could drain from my old AGM. And the weight is just crazy. Like this is my first experience with lithium. And I mean, I knew they were lightweight, but damn, like it's hard to believe this is more than twice the usable charge of my old AGM, when it probably weighs close to half or maybe even a third. Actually, you know what? Let's find out. Alrighty, I've pulled the AGM battery out of my canopy and got my scales from inside. Let's do a weight comparison right now. So first up, here's the 98 amp hour AGM battery from my canopy. I forgot how heavy this thing was. So that's weighing in at 27 and a half kilos for a 98 amp hour AGM battery. Oh. Alrighty, let's see how it compares to the new lithium battery. 9.9 .9 kilos, that's insane. So this is pretty close to one third of the weight of the old AGM and we're getting twice the usable charge. That's just crazy. So pretty much if we were to get the same amount of charge from AGM, we were looking at two of these. So what's that about 55, 56 kilos, just, just crazy. Um, so as you can see, that's one of the main benefits of going lithium over AGM is that weight saving. 
Weight's no joke when it comes to touring four-wheel drive setups. My canopy weighs 500 kilos when it's loaded up for camping. So being able to save weight like that just by swapping battery is a major advantage. The overall shape and size of the 120X is really similar to a standard deep cycle battery like the old AGM. You can get slimline models if that suits your needs better, but at least for me, this is gonna work well because I'm planning on installing this new lithium battery in the same battery box that I just took this AGM battery out of, at least for the short term, and you guys will just have to wait and see what the long term plan is. To charge the new battery while we're driving along, we've got one of iTech World's 40 amp DC DC chargers. They also make a 20 amp version as well, but this bigger version should charge the battery very, very quickly. Actually, lithium charges way quicker than AGM as well, so if my maths are correct, which they might not be, but hopefully they are, this 40 amp charger should charge the battery from empty to full in about three hours of driving. And there she is, our new DC-DC charger. Good looking unit. Nice and compact actually, like some of these DC-DC chargers nowadays are massive, but that one's a really nice size. Doesn't stick out too far, so it should be pretty neat up on the canopy wall. It's a nice strong metal construction the whole way around, to, gives it a real nice uh, rugged feel. To go along with that ruggedness, it's actually got an IP67 weatherproof rating, which I reckon is pretty crazy for anything electrical. And you can even mount these under the bonnet if you like. It's super simple and comes with three pre-wired Anderson connections, one to get charged from the alternator, one to deliver charge to your second battery, and an MPPT solar input so I can connect solar panels directly to the unit and it will take care of everything. I wish I had checked the box before filming this video today, by the way, because I didn't realize it came with uh, these three Anderson connections to wire into the car setup. I actually went out yesterday and bought some brand new Anderson plugs that I no longer need. So yeah, keep that in mind. If you go for one of these, they come with all the plugs you need. Other than that, we just get this selector switch on the side here to tell the unit what type of battery we're charging, whether it's lead acid, AGM gel, calcium, or of course, lithium. We also get four indicator lights letting us know when the unit has power, when it's charging the battery, when the battery is full, and when it's detected solar panels. Apart from that, there's no fancy uh, screens or readouts on the unit, which is totally fine by me. I'm planning to mount this in the same spot as the old DC-DC charger on the opposite side of the canopy, which means I'm barely going to see the thing. So all that I care about is its ability to be reliable and to charge that battery nice and quick. If you're considering lithium, it can be confusing reading all the different specs online, and you might be wondering why there's such a range in pricing on different lithium batteries on the market. Basically, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that's the case, but one spec in particular to watch out for is the continuous discharge rating. This 120X has a 150 amp continuous discharge rating, which means we can continuously pull 150 amps from it. And that's pretty decent, whereas some of the cheaper ones on the market have a rating well below 100 amps, and I've seen some as low as 50. Now, a low rating is okay if you're only planning on running a fridge and some basic 12 volt accessories, but as soon as you start running some more power hungry appliances, so things like inverters, that's where you'll run into trouble with the cheaper ones. As for getting this gear into the setup, I don't really need to reinvent the wheel here luckily. I'm basically just gonna drop this new battery into my existing battery box that has all my wiring already run to it, and then swap that old CTEC out for this new DC-DC charger. If you'd like to see what this process looks like from scratch essentially, if I didn't have a battery box, just stay tuned. We'll leave it at that for now. Stay tuned. So I've just got a very cheap battery box in the back of my canopy here that I use to house my second battery. You definitely don't need one of these if you prefer to do a more custom install. I basically just went this route because it was easier. The benefits to running a box like this is that it does make it a bit easier to mount the battery without having to make up any custom brackets. It keeps the battery somewhat protected and some of the wiring is already done for you with various power outlets, a mains power switch and a volt gauge, which I suppose won't be any use to me anymore with lithium. So anyway, all I'm doing is chucking this new battery in the old battery box and wiring it up exactly the same way as the old AGM battery. I might have to pull that King sticker off the box too because it just feels wrong chucking a brand new iTech World battery in a King's battery box.
there we go, all installed. I won't be able to properly test it out until I head away for a camping trip, but I am super keen to see how it all goes. I won't know what to do with all this extra power. Actually, I should be heading away over the Easter break for a bit of a camping trip, so I'll be able to put it through its paces and I'll let you guys know how it goes. But honestly, I don't think I'll ever need any more power than that battery can deliver. I might look at adding solar panels to keep it topped up, but that's about it. Also, we touched on a few of the benefits of lithium versus AGM in this video, but I'm thinking about making a dedicated video really diving into the differences between the two. So let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. I just had this weird urge to like power up my fridge, turn all the lights on and plug every 12 volt accessory I have into the new battery just to see how long it lasts, you know? <laughs> <laughs>